Welcome, Hornets, and thank you for joining me today. I know I wasn't going to, but I've decided to go ahead and do a video on the uh, review for polar um, uh, complex numbers in polar form. Here you'll notice a copy of our pretest. This was uh, the pretest that uh, we had uh, that I gave you on Tuesday. And I'm just going to kind of go through and do the problems with uh, those of you following along. So the first thing I need to do is recognize that this point that I'm going to be finding in our imaginary plane where we have the real numbers along the x and the imaginary numbers along the y to find negative 2 and negative 2i is located in the third quadrant. This is important for me when I find theta because I'm going to be using the arctangent and the arctangent will only give me theta prime that will end up being a 45 degree angle. So let's just go ahead and begin. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find r. r is found by the square root of a squared plus b squared. And we can see that our a is negative 2 and our b is sitting in front of i and is also negative 2. So we're looking at the square root of negative 2, the quantity squared, plus negative 2, the quantity squared. This is giving me the square root of 8. Notice I get 4 plus 4. When I take the square root of 8, I end up getting a 2 root 2. Now I need to find my theta. Now the first thing I need to recognize is that theta is the arctangent of b divided by a. When I plug in my numbers, I end up getting theta equaling the arctangent of positive 1. And this is, as I mentioned before, a 45 degree angle or pi over 4. And you have to decide whether you want to work in radians or degrees. I'm just going to go ahead and put it as 45 degrees. Now since this is the reference angle and I need to get it into the third quadrant, I'm going to add 180 degrees in order to find my theta. And this is going to give me theta equaling 225 degrees. I now can put my answer as 2 root 2, cis, 225 degrees. And that's the answer that we're looking for. For those of you who decided to do radians, you're looking at pi over 4 plus pi. And this then gives us 2 root 2, cis, 5 pi over 4. And this is my alternate answer in radians. Going to the second part, having to write from our polar form into our rectangular form, we have to remember that we are looking at r cosine of theta plus i sine of theta. And this is going to then be 5 cosine of pi over 4 plus i sine of pi over 4. I know that the cosine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. And I know that the sine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. So I'm looking at root 2 over 2 plus root 2 over 2i. And I'm going to distribute the 5. This gives me 5 root 2 over 2 plus 5 root 2 over 2i. That's my answer. Okay. Then I'm going to now go ahead and I'm going to do number 2. Once again, right up above, you can see R1 and R2. For B, you'll notice we have R1 and R2 in radian mode. Our goal is to take the R's, R1 and R2, and multiply them together, and our cis, theta1, plus theta2. Now remember, if we get a value that is over 360 degrees, notice our domain, we have to make sure that we keep subtracting 360 degrees until it's between 0 and 360. This then allows me to have uh, 6 times 4, or 4 times 6, depending upon how you want to look at it, cis, 30 degrees, plus 240 degrees. I end up getting 24 cis, 270 degrees. This is my answer. Now, when we're working with radians, we have to follow the same basic concept. So we're looking at uh, 7 times 5 
cis. And here becomes the problem. We end up having to get a common denominator. 11 pi over 6 plus 5 pi over 4. The common denominator is twelfths. So I'm going to do it off to the side. When I multiply the 2 by 6 times 2 and the 20, 11 by 2, I get 22 pi twelfths. I have to multiply by 3 over 3 in order to get twelfths for 5 pi over 4. And this gives me 15 pi over 12. When I add them, I end up getting 37 pi over 12. And this is much. So I have to go ahead and start subtracting 2 pi. These are rotations. So I'm going to subtract one rotation and see what happens. When I subtract 24 over 12, which is 2 pi, I end up getting 13 pi over 12. Therefore, I can now find my answer as 35 cis, 13 pi over 12. And that's the answer we're looking for. Going to number three, we're now going to find the division. Please remember that means that I'm taking R1 dividing by R2, cis the subtraction of theta1 minus theta2. If we get a negative, I need to add a rotation until I'm within 0 and 360. And if I get too much, I'm going to have to subtract 360 until I get a value that's between 0 and 360. So I'm going to start off by looking at this as 4 divided by 6, cis, 30 degrees, minus 240 degrees. I end up with 2 thirds, cis, negative 210 degrees. And it's a negative. So I'm going to have to take negative 210 and add one rotation, which is 360 degrees. And I end up getting 150 degrees as a result. My answer is therefore 2 thirds cis 150 degrees. I now go to B. We're now dealing with radians. Since I have my work up here, I can already see that I'm going to just subtract. So I have 7 divided by 5 cis. And I'm going to have 222 pi over 12 minus 15 pi over 12. And that's because I've already taken the 11 pi over 6 minus 5 pi over 6 and found my common denominator. When I do, I'm left with 7 pi over 12. 7 fifths, cis, 7 pi over 12. And this is my answer. When I'm doing powers, so our rule is to use de Moivre's theorem, which says take the first root, r1, and put it to the fourth power. Then cis, 4 times theta1. So in this, we're looking at um, our first value for r1 is 4. So we have 4 to the fourth power, cis, 4 times 30 degrees. I end up getting 4 to the 4th power, cis, 120 degrees. Now this is my first possibility. You do not have to multiply 4 to the 4th power. If you wish, you can go ahead and do so, but you won't have a calculator with you. So you will end up having to do it by hand, and you'll get 256, cis, 120 degrees. Now these are my two answers. And it's up to you which one you want to do. We're now going to take our uh, Z3, which is 7 cis 11 pi over 6. That means that I have 7 to the third power, cis 3 times 11 pi over 6. Notice that this is going to cause me to get 11 pi over 2 when I reduce. And this is well beyond 2 pi. So I'm going to have to subtract 2 pi. I end up getting 7 pi over 2. Once again, still too large. So I'm going to subtract another 2 pi. This time, I end up with 3 pi over 2, which is between 
0 and 2 pi. Now I have my answer as 7 to the third power, cis, 3 pi over 2, or if you prefer, you can find what 7 cubed is, and you should end up with 343. Once again, if you do it by hand, it's not that difficult. It is just tedious. Here are my two answers. 7 cubed, cis, 3 pi over 2, or 343 cis, 3 pi over 2. The last problem that we have is trying to find our root. We want to find all of the roots for x to the sixth equaling the complex number. Please remember there will be the number of roots equal to the power that we are looking at. In this case, there will be six answers. In B, there will be four answers. So I'm going to start off by writing what I'm looking at. And I have x to the sixth is equal to r2. R2 is 6 cis 240 degrees. I'm then going to take the 1 sixth power on both sides so that x is now to the first power. But now I have 6 cis 240, and it is also to the 1 sixth power. I'm now going to distribute. So according to De Moivre's theorem, we're going to be taking the sixth root of 6 cis. 1 sixth of 240 degrees, and we're now going to add rotations, 360 degrees K. Notice when I multiply by the 1 sixth, I get 40 degrees. So I have the sixth root of cis, of 6, excuse me, cis, 40 degrees, plus 60 degrees times K. That means that all of my angles will be 60 degrees apart starting at 40. So my first answer is the sixth root of 6, cis, 40 degrees. Adding 60 degrees gives me the sixth root of 6, cis, 100 degrees. Then the sixth root of 6, cis, 160 degrees. Continuing with the sixth root, and you can't see that, there we go, the sixth root of six, cis, adding 60 degrees, is 220 degrees. The sixth root of six, cis, 280 degrees. And then finally, the sixth root of six, cis, 340 degrees. And these represent the six roots for R square, uh, R2, uh, pardon, Z2, the 6 cis 240. The next one that we're going to do is using R, R uh, Z4. So I'm going to put this in as x to the fourth is equal to 5 cis, 5 pi over 4. Taking the fourth root on both sides, I get x, 5 cis. 5 pi over 4, and this is to the 1 fourth power. So we're going to use De Moivre's theorem again. We have the fourth root of 5, cis. 1 fourth of 5 pi over 4 plus 2 pi k. And you'll notice that I end up with 5 pi sixteenths plus pi over 2 k. That means that I'm going to be adding 8 pi over 2 each time. My first answer is going to be the fourth root of 5, cis, 5 pi over 16. The second answer is the fourth root of 5, cis, adding 8 pi over uh, 16, which is pi over 2, is going to give me 13 pi over 16. Repeating the process, I get the fourth root of 5, cis, 21 pi sixteenths. And then finally, the fourth root of 5, cis, 28 pi over, uh, pardon, 29, make sure I get that right, 29 pi over 16. And these are now my four answers.
Remember, there will always be the equal number to the power that we're working with, or to n for 1 over n. Alrighty, this was our pretest. I hope this has helped. Please remember to click like if you found it reasonable. If for some reason you were not happy with it, please make sure that you let me know, and I will attempt to repeat the video and correct whatever problems might have existed. Thank you very much, Hornets. Be safe, be kind to each other. Remember, that's the only way we can change the world. Cheers. Bye-bye.